they pull that out? Around the what's the pension uh Penn Kansas store? Let's go Quakers. I root for people. I don't root for teams, so Players are at fourth fifteen. All right, folks, if you want to filter in and find some seats, and uh, we'll do uh, our housekeeping before we start this second session of press conferences this afternoon. Um, please, everyone, uh, remember to silence your cell phones or any other recording devices uh, during the press conference, and also no flash photography uh, during the press conferences. You are also not allowed to uh, record the press conferences on your phones. If you, if you would like a video of this, please see our friends uh, from Hammond Communications in the back. They will help you get set up uh, to either record it or get um, the information from the FTP site later. Uh, we do have two microphone holders on either sides of the room. Please request the microphone uh, and identify yourself and your outlet before asking uh, any questions. And please, uh, especially for the players, let them know uh, which player you'd like to answer the question if you have um, any specifics. All of the press conference transcripts uh, are being printed today and will be found outside in the media room, uh, probably about 45 minutes or so after the conclusion of each press conference. They're also available online at ncaa.com backslash transcripts, and those can all be accessed um, that way. Uh, press conference uh, satellite feed coordinates are Galaxy 17, Transponder 19B, downlink frequency 12075.50, horizontal, and Michigan State players are coming to the holding area.
Okay, we'll get uh, started here. We have Cassius Winston, uh, Tum Tum Nairn, and Miles Bridges. So we will open uh, the floor to questions for the student athletes. Again, please uh, get the microphone and identify yourself when asking questions. Specifically for Cash and Tom, I'd like you both to address this, please, as point guards. What sticks out to you defensively from Bucknell? Um, the, uh, the, the guards have a lot of experience, and they're playing with a lot of confidence. So, you know, they, they're going to make and take tough shots. So we got to kind of, you know, keep funneling them into tough shots. Don't let them, let them get their rhythm going and things like that early. Yeah, I think the experience, you know, having a lot of seniors is what make them a really good team. And like Cash said, I think – we stick to our game plan, uh, you know, and just they have that experience, we'll be fine. Casey Harrison, State News. Question for Tom. Uh, you know, with Bucknell being such a senior-laden team, how exactly do you go approaching that to such a, you know, a young core group of guys? Well, just understanding that they've played together for, for a while. Um, and, you know, in the tournament, experience helped. But, you know, we're a pretty young team, but we, we have a lot of experience, you know. Um, me being a fourth-year senior, Gav, fifth-year senior, and um, being sixth-year senior, but also our freshmen are, you know, sophomores now, so they have a, a year of experience under their belt, too. Yeah, Bob Wanowski from the Detroit News. For Miles, uh, Miles, obviously you came back for, for another run at it. Why do you think you might be better equipped and ready to handle the run this time than you were at this time last year? We, we have way more depth this year. Um, we have a lot more bigs, and our guards have way more experience. Um, we kind of been through the wars last year, so I feel like that prepared us for this year. I'm Vedant Gupta. Um, I'm applying to be a Sports Illustrated for Kids, and I have a question for Miles. Um, you've done a lot for McKenna. You've dedicated your season to her. She was actually a classmate of mine. Mm -hmm. um, what's it like knowing that this is for her and she's – out there? Uh, man, that's a great question. Um, she, she's inspired me a lot um, ever since the day I met her. Um, and after her birthday, I dedicated this season to her. So I wouldn't think of any other way to send her out the right way um, to win a national championship for her. Miles, for you, attacking the rim, how important is that, especially if you guys are going to win six and get a national title, do you have to be aggressive thinking attack the rim? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I definitely have to be aggressive. Um, it's going to open up the floor for my teammates and for myself if I do that. Um, and it, it, it kind of put me in the mindset to take over the game sometimes if I get going to the basket. Ryan Cole, Impact Sports. Cassius, you're playing in your home city once again this year. I mean, just what are you most excited for uh, as far as getting to play in Detroit again? Uh, I mean, like, you know, the city has shown me a lot of love through my journey. So this is a chance for me to, you know, get back. And I know a lot of my friends and family are going to be there, you know, firsthand just to see how much I've grown, see how far I've came this year. Hey, guys. So I have a question also uh, uh, with Sports Illustrated for Kids application. What do you guys think it is that's going to help you to move through the tournament if you do it well? And what is it that's going to get you an exit if you don't do it well? I think consistency is going to help us in, in staying focused. Um, you know, they all count the same now. It's, it's win or go home. So I think the teams that can stay consistent for the longer periods of time, um, that helps help them advance through the tournament. I feel like also overlooking teams um, – like, if it's a higher seed playing a lower seed, they, they tend to overlook teams. But everybody in this tournament is a great team, so we can't overlook anybody. Uh, yeah, I would say uh, our effort and how hard we play. You know what I'm saying? If we, if we play our hardest, eventually we're going to we're gonna meet a team that match, matches our talent level and things like that. So, you know, the harder team, the harder playing team is going to win those games. Any more questions for the players? Hondo? Cash, you, excuse me, Tom, you have talked about Cash and your pride in his maturity and how he's changed as a player. How have you seen him mature from where he was a year ago today? Uh, I, think, I think in every way you could change, you know, as a, as a point guard, especially in our league, um, got better defensively, changed his body, um, shooting the ball extremely well, you know, leads the Big Ten in assists. 
I think every area, every area of his game is improving, especially him being vocal, you know, on and off the court. Uh, Michael Epps with Focal Point. Uh, very Cassius and uh, Tom Tom. Um, you guys won a game last year in the Friday game, so you know how to get through the weekend. Does that help you feel any more comfortable as you're going for this first and second round? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I, I still believe that, you know, all of last year and everything we went through is, you know, built for this this point right here. You know, this team's been through a lot of ups and downs together, a lot of wars, you know, things that tested us. And I believe now we got the experience, you know, we got the talent, and our minds are ready, to, you know, to make this run. So. Whatever happens, you know, things aren't going to go perfectly every moment. But, you know, we got we got what it takes to dig down and, you know, just put wins together. I second that. Harold Meeks. Harold Meeks for Telus USA News Network. Um, I'm sure you heard by now that President Obama has picked you guys to take it all. Does that put any pressure on you? <laughs> I, go ahead. Yeah, that, that, that puts a big bullseye on our back. Um, but hey, we just got to go out there and play and see what happens. Anybody else? We have one question back here, and that'll be the last one. <laughs> Evan Meyer with Mac Report Online. Gentlemen, it's been about a week since you last played in the Big Ten tournament in New York. How have you been able not only to rest up, but still keep your edge coming into today's, uh, tomorrow night's game against Bucknell? Um, I, I mean, I think this team, you know, we're always going to be motivated. You know, we're in our mindset where if it's not a nat national championship, then it's probably a bust for this team, you know, just because of how many players, we'll, you know, what we think we're capable of. So, you know, every game we're going to be motivated to go out there and play our best just because we, we got that end goal in mind. So, the, you know, it was a good week for us to get off our feet a little bit, and then we came to practice and we got better. So it wasn't, it wasn't no, we, we, didn't, we, we didn't really let up. We didn't take our foot off the gas. We got better this week. All right, gentlemen, thank you. You can get, go head out and get thank ready you. for practice. Coach Izzo will be down in a minute.
talk about? Exactly. Living the dream, just like you. It's a nightmare. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, just a reminder, please, to ask for the mics uh, before you ask questions and to identify uh, yourself and the outlet you're from. Uh, we will turn to Coach Izzo for an opening statement before we open the floor to questions. Well, we're really excited. I think we had a good week of practice. I think the, uh, the week off, you never know how it goes, but it was as good as it could go for me and for us, and I thought uh, coming to this venue, which I think is gorgeous, you know, I've been spent a little time here in December and coming down uh, early on for a little tour to see the inside and outside. I think it's one of the premier um, arenas in the country and we're looking forward to playing in it. Jason Rothbeater, DetroitSportsMedia.com. Uh, Coach, what do you think Bucknell does well as a team? What challenges might they be able to present for your team? I said, I, I looked at, you know, Middle Tennessee, not to bring that up, but I look at Bucknell and um, I, I, I kind of shake my head that they're a 14 seed, and I mean that. You got three seniors that can all put the ball in the, in the hole. Uh, Brown is a very good point guard. Um, they all shoot threes. I think seven or eight of the nine players, I think seven of the nine, all shoot threes at a regular basis. Um, they have experience, they have some depth. Uh, they have some speed, and as I said, you know, when when you play in games like this, if anything's called an upset anymore, and I don't know if it is, but the way upsets are made a lot of times is by the three-point shot, and they have a lot of players that can make three-point shots, and we're going to have to defend that. Tom, for you, when you watch Bucknell, what stands out to you most from them that you just – Notice they really think that's that's a uh, an area that you have to concentrate on. Well, again, they've got inside outside. You know, they've got a guard, they've got a forward, and they've got a center. The center was MVP last year. The forward's MVP this year. The center is defensive player of the year this year. The point guard is is quick and can do a lot of things. So they've got a lot of pieces right there. You know. Sometimes it's easy to sag off if you just got a good inside game. Sometimes it's easy to press up if you just got a good perimeter game. They really do have maybe the ultimate balance. And that center is uh, the way you can shoot it right hand and left hand uh, is effective and, and good. And we're going to have to do a good job on him. They also get to the free throw line a lot. I think Thompson gets there uh, seven times in their conference, nine times, I think, throughout the year. And that's a lot of times getting to a free throw line. I'm Vedant Gupta. I'm applying for Sports Illustrated for Kids, and I have a question. So you guys have, you score big on the court, but you also score big off the court, such as doing things like um, helping with the Flint water crisis, helping with people who have cancer, 
What's it like to know that you're representing those people? Oh, what a good question by the most well-dressed guy in the room. So my hat off to you. Um, don't grow up to be regular writers, and then you won't be able to dress that good. But uh, I would say that you know it's a privilege and an honor to uh, to be a head coach. It really is, and it comes with its goods and its bads. But the goods are you get to do things for other people. And you know I think it was Magic Johnson at our place who coined the phrase many years ago that uh, you know good players play great, but great players make other people play great. And I think that's always been the theory I've had there you know our job is to be role models and to try to help out other people and you know going up to Flint a couple times like we did was was great and uh, you know trying to be involved with a lot of things with cancer a lot of things that have uh, our regular people uh, outside of our basketball family deal with um, maybe as I'm as proud of our players of that as I am their accomplishments on the court. Coach, Amanda Smith, Global Basketball. Uh, with such a short amount of time to practice today, what would you say is the most important thing for you guys to fine tune and work on before going into tomorrow? We just want to get some shots up, you know. I think when you when you get into, uh, there's always this myth that at a pro arenas, um, you know, it's kind of harder to shoot in. I, I don't see why the basket's the same height and the, you know, the diameter is the same and everything else, but, um, I think that's what a lot of people try to do here. They'll, you know, like we practiced this morning somewhere else, and then we'll try to come in here, and 80% of what we'll do is just get shots up, get the guys comfortable with the arena, and um, that's really what we'll do now as they kind of say the hay is kind of in the barn. You know, we've kind of done everything here the last three, four days to get ready, and we'll fine tune a couple of things, but I think the big thing is just feel comfortable with your shooting. Line coach, uh, today with the technology, it's easy to get information on other teams. Since your tenure at Michigan State, it's, is it easier now to just get video, get information quickly on, on a Bucknell so you don't have to wait maybe a day or two to get some film or video? Well, it is easier. You know, we've always had an incredibly successful, uh, we have a very good video program in our place. and. I mean, to the point where we've taped 16 or 1,800 games a year. Um, so we don't rely on anybody else but ourselves. So when that thing, we find out who we got, my managers are like a bunch of elves, and they, uh, they had all the game tapes that we had immediately. And then you make some calls, and you try to you know, look at some teams. How did they play them? How did the Big Ten teams play them? How did North Carolina play them? And, you look at all those things, I'm sure, the same way they looked at ours. And um, But getting film is is easier now for them on us, or it's easier for teams that don't maybe spend as much money as we do on those kind of things. But uh, all the technology, all the work you do, uh, at the end of the day, you know, they say in football you still got to block and tackle, and here you still got to defend and rebound and put the ball in the basket, and that's kind of what it comes down to. So, Coach Vipul Gupta, I know if you remember me from way back when. I do. Um, great. So, I got a question. Middle Tennessee State, you remember it. Kansas is having a heck of a battle right now with Penn. Um, coming out right out of the gates, you know, if a team gets a little momentum, it becomes a struggle, as you know, from, from that experience. So, is there anything you're doing to prepare right at the beginning of the game to come out and hit them hard? <laughs> uh, I, I'm preparing to come out and hit them hard. I don't know if we'll respond that way, but you're right. Um, you know, it's it's the underdog mentality that, uh, first of all, everybody in arenas, I was pulling for the underdog. And uh, that's one thing. And, and you know, trying to convince your players to play the team, not the name on their shirt. And sometimes they're looking at the opposite, you know. Maybe they're sitting there at Penn saying, well, that's Kansas. So it can affect you one way or, any, or the other. But I just say that the parity in college basketball now is so incredible. And... Uh, I I look at this team that we're playing and I say, wow. I mean, you know, if they're a 14 seed and I look at some of the other teams and some of these teams don't get the credit. When you got juniors and seniors, as I said, in the case of Bucknell, three seniors that are 1,000-point scorers that have been through the wars, that have played West Virginia, they're tournament tested, all those things, um, there, there's an advantage to that. And uh, 
we just got to make sure, and I think we've, you know, we've done a pretty good job. We had some players that played in that game. Uh, I don't think we'll take anybody for granted, but uh, sometimes the difference between really ready to play and not is this small, but it can make a big difference. Coach Ryan Cole, uh, Impact Sports. You've played in Detroit in some of your runs in the past. I mean, how much an advantage can can your guys get from the fact that you're playing so close to home? Well, you know, it, it'd probably be unfair to tell you that I, I think a lot. Uh, unfair to the other teams. But then again, I played in North Carolina against North Carolina. I played there against Duke, you know, and it seemed like every year they were in Greensboro or some of those places. So, you know, a couple times it's been in Detroit and I really believe that in uh, when it was here in 2000 for the regionals, um, you know, we were down both games to Syracuse and Iowa State and found a way to win. And uh, there's no question that 18,000 or however many fans we had there, and it might not be the same now because there's more teams in the first round, but we had a lot of fans there and it, and it helped. And I, I think it does. You know, some people ask me the question, are there going to be more distractions because you're here with families and everything? You know, it's flip a coin. Uh, I think we make a lot of a lot of things at the end of the day. Uh, you know, this team has won eight out of nine Big Ten games on the road. We have we understand how to win on the road, too, and when people are booing you or things like that. So I, I think it's going to be a little advantage. How much, I don't know. Uh, Michael Epps with Focal Point. Uh, you've been through so many of these tournaments. I just want to ask, you're trying to win six games. How much more difficult are these games in the tournament compared to in the regular season or the Big Ten tournament? Just Is there a different feel? Is it just a regular game, or, or how much more difficult is it to go out there? No, it's not a regular game. I can promise you that. Anytime you're in a situation where you're one and done, and that's kind of, uh, as I said, when we played Illinois at home, um, we kind of tried to tell our players we're kind of in one and done time now. If you win this game, uh, the worst you can do is tie for the Big Ten. If you win the next game, you win it outright. So, you know, one game makes a difference. Then you get to the Big Ten tournament, it's the same thing. And I think that pressure, you know, everybody deals with differently. And um, there's no secret that we're still an awfully young team. Uh, talent matters, but it doesn't always matter uh, over experience. And if, if there's one thing that worries me a little bit, it would be that, uh, you know, we're, we played in the tournament last year, but we didn't really, we weren't as competitive as you needed to be because we just had so many injuries and what we went through. But uh, I think we're ready to play, so I'm excited about getting started. Matt, Matt Sharpen of Detroit News. I know we've talked a lot about Cassius and his development on the floor this year. Um, but I want to ask you a little bit more off the court about him because, you know, from our perspective, we've seen how he's kind of taken this step this year. When everything was going on around the program, he's a guy that kind of emerges this voice of the team. I was just curious, from your perspective, how have you seen him grow off the court? And, and you know, that that's an ec exciting question. And, and, you know, it's going to be interesting because he's had a great week of practice. But he did kind of do that. And without us really saying anything, uh, he uh, he handles himself, which doesn't surprise me. He's a very intelligent kid, as we all know. And But sometimes, last year, a quieter kid. And I think that's the part of his game that he's improving on. And um, as he grows in that area, I think you're going to see the rest of his game blossom. And under some tough circumstances, he did a unbelievable job of handling it without any direction from us. Uh, and I think you know, as he does off the court, such a good job. If he continues to do that on the court and be more demanding and be the quarterback of this team, um, I'm gonna, I think his progress is going to rise and I think our team's going to get better. And he's um, really had a good week, so I'm, I'm kind of excited to see how Cash does in this tournament. This is Nons Gupta here again, uh, playing for Sports Illustrated for Kids. Uh, there are a lot of kids out there who admire you, and there's a lot of people who admire you. Any specific advice to them? <laughs> uh, yeah, you got some good questions. Um, were you talking to my mother and my sister, or who were you talking to? Um, you know what? Like everybody, uh, I think all coaches and all people, you know, 
they try their hardest to do the right thing. And uh, I've kind of withstood the test of time because I've stayed at a place that I love greatly. And um, when you stay at a place a long time, um, you gather friends and you gather people and you get to do things in your community. I mean, I don't, I don't look at myself as a basketball coach at Michigan State. I look at myself as a member of the, of the East Lansing, Lansing community. And um, so, you know, when you go to church with people, when you go um, pump gas with people, when you take the garbage out and there's people there, you get to meet a lot of different people when you stay in the same place a long time. And I think for the most part, I try to treat people like I'd want them to treat me. And, uh, and so if those people are saying that to you, God bless them. Tom, Chris Solari, Detroit Free Press. Uh, you, men you mentioned about last year in, in the tournament, and that was uh, – Josh had a big game in that first game. I guess for, with him, what, what do you want to see a little bit more? Does he need to be more aggressive going to the rim uh, to set up the mid-range, or does he just need to hit more shots? Well, you know, he was shooting it really well from the three, Chris, and um, – and I think he, he started looking – his mid-range game is as good as anybody's, but I think he was looking for that so much he was forgetting that he was open at the three. So we really spent some time looking at film and saying, boy, you're open here. You know, are, are you seeing what you need to see? And, uh, you know, there's no question that if I looked at, at this week, I mean, I think we had a great week, but I think in order, <laughs> Nick Ward might have had the best week at Cassius and – and Josh, I mean, those three guys, and I think those three guys are guys that needed to. So we'll see tomorrow whether that, uh, what that does. But I think the time last week and this week to really look at film, you know, we went through that seven games in 11 day, or seven on 11 on the road, and it seemed like we were just spending so much time on our opponent that the coaches didn't do a very good job of analyzing what are we doing right and wrong. And, uh, and in saying that, we won some big games in tough places to play on the road. I just think we were off a little bit, and some of it was our shooting. And, and his shooting went down maybe as much as anybody's over that seven, six, seven games. And, uh, but he shot it well recently, and I think he sees the difference. So it's hard to say how teams will play you. If they play up on you, you've got to take them to the, the basket. But if they're off on you and you've got three-point shots, I think he's got to just shoot them. And that's what we talked about this week. Okay, we're going to take two more. Uh, Greg Joyce from the New York Post. How do, have you seen your guys kind of block out the noise over the last few weeks? And do you think having that week off maybe helped in that regard? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, I, we've had a great two weeks. I mean, I have no complaints about the two weeks. We get to spend some time together. It was a little freakish to have no games and spring break. Uh, like I said, I know Michigan had it the week before, I think. Purdue had it the week after, and I don't know what Ohio State had, but, you know, you have a week off of no games, and then you have spring break. It, it's kind of strange, and uh, yet I think we balanced it the best we could. We used some film. We used some individual workouts. We used some shooting. We used some practice, and then on Sunday, we got right back on track, and I was actually, even though it was a day longer, I was happy we were playing Friday because I think the routine of school – practice meetings at night is a good routine and I think that routine has helped us uh, this week uh, piggybacking off of what we covered last week in the film part of it okay and our last questions back here coach Elton Alexander with the plane dealer it's been a while <laughs> um, kind of piggybacking a little bit how close are you as a program to being back to normal so to speak after the turmoil around the season and are you any closer to talking about everything or are you still sticking to uh, the game plan, so to speak. Uh, I'm definitely sticking to the game plan now. But um, um, how close are we? You know, that is a million-dollar question that I'm not sure anybody will be able to answer, um, only because um, any time there's any adversity of any, a loss, everybody, some people take it one way, some people take it the other. But when it's, you know, when there is noise and, uh, I mean, no matter what it's from, um, Every player kind of acts differently and accepts it or doesn't accept it. And probably of all the things that I've had to coach this year, that's the hardest is trying to figure out, is it because of this, is it because of this, or is it because of this? And, um, and so there were times I was maybe a little harder on them, but probably more often than not, I wasn't. 
and I'm not sure that's good either. But that's that's the balancing act that you had to do. I mean, that was um, the situation we were presented. And I think uh, as I look back on it, um, whenever it's all over, uh, I'm going to appreciate how well our guys handled it. But I will also say how probably difficult it was for them. And so uh, I'm just proud of the way they handled it. I'm proud of my team right now. I'm excited to start playing, and I'm looking forward to uh, – getting it going tomorrow night. So thank you. Right. Thanks, Coach. We'll let you get to practice. Coach Dixon.
All right, folks, we're going to get underway. We'll let Coach get settled, and then uh, we'll ask him to start with an opening statement, and then we'll open the floor to questions. Uh, again, our mic holders are on either side of the room, and please just get the mic before asking uh, any questions, and then identify yourself and your outlet. Coach? Well, okay. Uh, it's great to see uh, Jim Sadlin here to support the Horn Frogs. That's good to see. Make that trip for us. But uh, now excited about uh, being here for our guys. It's obviously a um, new experience for our, our program, and uh, I'm very excited to uh, get them here. Um, good practice today as far as uh, light, but we'll get some shots up today and get ready for uh, Syracuse. A quick turnaround as far as knowing who we're playing for us. So um, a little unique. And first time I've been through it, we're playing the uh, winner of the playing game. So certainly something that uh, uh, a little different. Uh, you get some time, but not time to focus on just one team. And then uh, obviously for us, it's, a, it's an exciting time for TCU and uh, getting to the tournament. and. Uh, so exciting. I think our band's at the shoot-around and our cheerleaders at shoot-around. So I don't know if that's been done uh, normally, but uh, first time I'd seen it. But we're excited to be here, and uh, we're looking forward to playing a really good team. And we'll open the floor to questions. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. Coach, obviously with TCU, a little bit different than Pittsburgh in the tournament, but the guy on the other side, Jim Beheim in Syracuse, yeah. you know all too well just what you could say about Getting that matchup, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, obviously the the Pittsburgh Syracuse uh, matchup was a was a rivalry and uh, historic games and so many great uh, matchups and and so many uh, uh, over so such a long period of time. But um, you know, I joked uh, with somebody earlier that you know maybe we can start up the Syracuse TCU rivalry and uh, get that going. Uh, uh, the Northeast versus the, the Southwest and see how that carries. But uh, certainly. Uh, you know, obviously, I have great respect for Coach Beheim, and we can talk basketball and, and different things. But as I mentioned earlier, with Coach, I mean, uh, when I went to Pittsburgh as an associate head coach, uh, new Coach Hopkins um, had a, was friends with him. Um, through that, I think we came pretty close with uh, uh, Coach uh, Coach Beheim when when Ben and I came that way. And then uh, there was Jim Zezatek, who I'm sure some of you guys know, Syracuse guy who's lived in Pittsburgh and was a good friend. And uh, through that, it seemed like we just were closer attached to those guys right away. Um, once I became head coach, I, uh, um, you know, he, he was really uh, uh, forthcoming and, and, you know, and, and welcoming, I should say, uh, to me uh, when I became a head coach young. I think I was 36, similar to him in a lot of ways, taking over a program. And uh, I think similar in that they didn't want to give him the job either, and they didn't want to give me the job either, but we kind of got it uh, at the same time. And I always looked at him with great respect because he'd been at a place for so long and certainly something that I uh, was able to do too as well and uh, very proud of that. But um, the thing I remember most is that he would, uh, how he reached out to us and uh, reached out to me, and, uh, and I, I watched him, how he was involved in other uh, outside activities, whether it be the Coaches vs. Cancer, he got us involved in that. And my family, uh, my, my wife Jacqueline, his wife Julie, they communicated on how to get that started and running that. Um, NABC, I think I got the approval from him uh, that I could be on the NABC. I got the okay, so I think that helped. Uh, Jim knows how that stuff works, the politics, and uh, uh, all different things. So I, I, I often joked with him that I spent my off season listening to Jim. Uh, speak at different uh, events, whether it be the Nike trip, which he pretty much ran that too. Uh, USA Basketball, he got me on that to coach the USA team uh, in the World Championships. So he got me involved in that. So I would, I would joke and we'd hang out on the Nike trip and, and we'd talk about different things and, and I'd laugh. Well, here I go here, I'm listening to uh, him give him the state of the game. So obviously I respect him more so for, the, uh, for all the wins, and I think everybody knows about that, but all the things he did outside basketball. And, and invited me in and, and, and pointed me in the right way, I think, too. Stephen Stevenson, Fort Worth Star Telegram. Coach, okay. when you look at assess Desmond's season, mm -hmm. how would you character – did he surpass your preseason expectations or how would you characterize the season he's had and what he's brought to – Yeah, this – on the way up, getting better, you know, improving, you know, and then uh, – you know, I'd like to say here, I know we thought he'd be just the, the guy he is, but you got to remember he had no Division I scholarships coming out of uh, going into his senior year. And uh, a guy who obviously we took late, the only high major offer 
and he just keeps getting better. You know, he's becoming a better defender. He's becoming a better guy off the dribble, uh, rebounding better. That's the one in the last couple of games. So he's really had seven in our last game. Um, so, you know, obviously he had a knack for scoring around the basket, finishing. I think he became a better shooter as a freshman to the point now he's a 50% three-point shooter. So, you know, he's improved in every aspect, and uh, he continues to do so. Great energy, uh, fun kid, great kid, well-liked and uh, well-known and, uh, and on campus, and uh, just the type of kids we want to have, you know, get representing our university. So uh, it's fun. It's, it's, it's uh, proud to see a guy that's uh, done so much and, and – uh, uh, you know, I kind of res <laughs> respect him. I didn't get much recruitment coming out of high school, and TCU took a chance on me. I guess uh, uh, we, we took a chance on him, and he's made us look good. Mike Waters from the Syracuse Post Standard. Uh, Jamie, when you were at Pitt, obviously you went up against yep. Syracuse in the zone What's a up, lot. Mike? How are you? You don't have to introduce yourself. Oh, I, think I'm, I think it's a law. <laughs> NCAA right here. Yeah. <laughs> When you were at Pitt, ahead, you went up against the Syracuse right. zone quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, what, what were the your keys to attacking it, and is that going to correlate to tomorrow night when you have kids who haven't seen that Syracuse yeah. zone, like maybe your kids at Pitt had? Well, see, I mean, the thing about the Syracuse zone, it's changed over the years, and I think it changes year to year, and so you just can't do the same things time and time again. It's 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 morphed. It's 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 changed. You know, the thing we did, and I've told this story before, and that. We, uh, when I became the head coach, I realized, you know, to, if you're going to win in the Big East, you want to win championships, you got to beat Syracuse. And, and uh, they're going to play the zone, 2 3 zone. But also at that time, Louis was at, uh, at Seton Hall. Um, coach Welsh was at Providence. So uh, Patino was at Louisville. Uh, so you, you were seeing that zone pretty much throughout the conference and all kind of uh, disciples of Coach Beheim. So, our belief was you had to be good at it, and you weren't going to be good the day before practice, the day before you played them. You had to be good at it from start to finish of your season. So we worked on it from October 15th on, and also we played, we practiced it because that was our secondary defense. And so I'd watch it and see what they did to implement when we played that defense, but also to help us go against it. So um, you know that that's uh, I, th I think you know as you see when they get in the NCAA tournament and you see teams uh, struggle against it's because they you can't it's hard to prepare in one day. And, uh, you know, you can simulate and practice them, but the thing is, better than anything, probably best thing he does in basketball, he recruits to his system, recruits to what he does. So uh, we looked at the size of the, you know, the um, Ken Palm has the uh, tallest teams. I don't know what the, what the phrase they use on. They rank the, high, the tallest teams. You know, he's number one in the country in length and is, is Syracuse. So it's 351 teams are the tallest guys. So he recruits wings and guards that are big and long. And, you know, everybody says that. Well, there's a numbers to prove it. So... Um, so he recruits to it, so it's going to be good. And uh, but you have to adjust each year, I think. And and I think he adjusts during the game. I, know, I remember one game where they changed what they were doing. We were hurting, so we had to change what we were doing too, halfway through, and it took us a little bit while. So um, they adjust, and it's just not your, you know, it's not going to come out. I know it's, everybody thinks he just puts the two, three, just shows up, but there, there's adjustments to be made. You know, Mike. Do we have any other questions for Coach? Right up here. Coach, just what you can say about turning TCU around and just where it is at this point. 1998 was the last time you've been there a couple seasons and back in the tournament. So just what you've seen through these last couple seasons. Well, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, I obviously I think uh, you know Trent Johnson was a very good coach before. He recruited some really good players. He coached them hard, had some tough breaks with injuries and uh, things that occurred. Uh, um, so, I mean, I took over what was probably a better program than people uh, uh, knew. Um, the uh, support from administration has been, you know, has been unwavering and committed. And, you know, sometimes we got to say, well, this is kind of how it's got to be done and what we need to do. But, the, you know, just Chancellor Boschini and um, his uh, commitment to, to me and uh, belief, belief in what we're doing is, you know, coaches need that. And uh, he gave it to uh, to me, and so I uh, thank him for that. But um, yeah, it's it's been a it's been a process, and yeah, I, if, you know, I, I we never put a timetable on it. The belief was to win and win right away, and uh, uh, I said that at the press conference. You're probably not supposed to say that, but I did, 
And uh, I wasn't into, you know, just, you know, give me a five-year plan and, and uh, um, just, uh, I believe you got to tur turn it right away and start turning as much as you can and get every guy you can to buy in. And sometimes guys won't and you move on. But uh, uh, we, we got a good group and we're lucky. We had high character guys in our senior class last year that took to uh, uh, less playing time, less scoring, sacrificing. Uh, but the end result was an NIT championship, which was huge for us. Just huge for anybody. I mean, because you see the teams playing last night and tonight and going forward. I mean, those are all high-powered programs. Um, so it was huge for us and just a great step in getting us better. So it's been, you know, it's it's it seems like it's been that quick, but it's you know, there's been a lot of work put in, a lot of sacrifice. And I really point that we call them the believers, those four seniors. I mean, their numbers won't, you know, go, but we got a big picture on the wall of in our practice facility of those four guys. and. And they're great kids. All four graduated, and all four are around campus all the time. And um, a couple of them played overseas this year, but they really believed in what we were doing and, and uh, sacrificed. And you, you, you need things like that, and that's hard to do. That's hard to do. So it's been it's been fun, uh, and uh, but at the same time, we don't want to be. Uh, I don't want to be the team that's just here. You know, happy that we reached the NCAA tournament. We want to. We want to. We're good enough to win some games and and, and beat some people, but. Uh, uh, we got a tough one in the first one already, so uh, that's what it is. Any last questions for Coach before we let him head out to practice? All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Congrats on a great year thank so you. far, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you.
everyone. Uh, we're going to start with the Bucknell student athletes. Just uh, a few reminders uh, to please silence your cell phones uh, or any other devices that you have in the room. We are asking that you not uh, record any parts of the press conferences with either the student athletes or uh, the coaches. Uh, that is available through Hammond Communications. Uh, and you can see our friends in the back uh, if you would like that. Uh, so to get this underway, Stephen Brown, Zach Thomas, and Nana Falland. Did I say that correctly? All right. Yeah, I was worried about that all day. Uh, we will open uh, with questions for the Bucknell student athletes. Uh, this first one, uh, Tom Davis, Fort Wayne News Sentinel. Uh, for Zach, uh, explain your senior project again. Uh, can you do that in layman's terms for the uneducated? <laughs> yeah, I'll try. Uh, okay, threw me off guard there. Um, yeah, so I'm working on a senior design project. It's uh, as a biomedical engineer, we have to do that as our senior design. Um, so. My group's working on a device that uh, stabilizes the coronary artery during bypass surgery. So we're basically uh, making improvements to the current device that's being used. What interested you about that? Um, and, bio, and you're talking about biomedical that, engineering? And that particular just that field, subject. medical, yeah. all of that. Um, well, I didn't know I wanted to do it when I was a freshman, but I got into it um, through a program uh, that they put you through your freshman year. Um, gets you a little taste of a couple different engineering uh, fields. So I chose that my freshman year. And then for this project, it was kind of, um, we, we were able to choose a couple different topic areas and ours was a uh, cardiology department. So we then focused uh, that idea on that idea after a couple weeks of uh, probing in that area. Okay. Now all three of you have been honored for academics. Is there peer pressure among your team to excel, and maybe Steven and Nana could answer this. Is there peer pressure among everybody to perform academically uh, within your program? Um, I wouldn't say not necessarily uh, peer pressure. I mean, we all come to Bucknell to get a good, educa good education and uh, also play sports. So, I mean, um, you know, we just always try to keep each other accountable with our school. I mean, if anybody needs help, I mean, a bunch of us are usually in similar classes with electives and stuff, so I mean, we do a pretty good job of keeping each other accountable. So I mean, there's really no pressure, especially when everybody is motivated to do well in school. Kevin Meyer, Mac Report Online. Gentlemen, I remember last year you took West Virginia almost to the end in Buffalo before falling. How much can you draw on that experience into your game tomorrow night against Michigan State? Um, just that, uh, you know, we've been here before and we know what to expect this time. And, uh, you know, we've prepared all year. We've had a tough uh, non-conference schedule uh, to play big teams like this. So uh, we're up for the challenge. Um, we're, we're better prepared this year, so uh, it should be fun. Zach, this is Matt Wenzel with MLive. You are a biomedical engineering major. You're, what, do, what do you plan on doing next year at this time? Uh, I plan on playing basketball. Okay. Um, so. Uh, you know, hopefully that, that major will pay dividends down the road. But yeah, for next year, I'm trying to play professionally, so. Okay, your, your matchup is uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. Yeah. Obviously, I'm sure you've seen of him. What do you, how do you prepare for a guy like that who's, who's obviously got the length, 7'4", wingspan, and, and all the skill and talent? Right, yeah, no, I mean, obviously he's a uh, draft uh, lottery pick um, type. So it's going to be a tough matchup. So I think you, with that, you just kind of have to um, look at where I could limit him as best I can. And then um, I think uh, I'm a matchup problem as well for him. So just try and uh, exploit um, his, his small weaknesses that he has and then um, you know, play to my strengths and use my, uh, uh, my knowledge of the game since he's, you know, he's a freshman. So hopefully I have a little bit of experience on him. Mike DeFabo, CNHI. Uh, for any of you guys, uh, you know, in the one and done era, it's increasingly rare to see three seniors up here yeah. at the podium leading scores and all that. First of all, just what, what does it mean or what, you know, to be up there together and to go through this journey together and have it, you know, come to an end in the NCAA tournament? And also, in what ways do you think that the experience is going to show itself? I mean, it's definitely a blessing being able to, you know, be with such a great class. Um, 
being able to go to the NCAA uh, tournament back-to-back -back years, uh, being seniors, um, um, you couldn't ask for anything more, especially a uh, way to end your, you know, four years here at Bucknell. And uh, to be in it with along these guys, I mean, couldn't ask for anything better. Uh, Ryan Cole with uh, Impact Sports. Really, for any of you, Tom Izzo uh, says that he, quote, shakes his head whenever he sees that you guys are a 14 seed. I mean, what's that like to see a Hall of Fame coach so widely known for March success giving credit to your team like that? Uh, yeah, we shake that. We shake our heads when they they're a three seed. So, uh, yeah, no, um, it's just the way it worked out, I guess. Um, we feel like we could probably could have been maybe a little bit higher, but um, we we like our chances either way. No matter who we're playing against, we ju we just got to play solid. Uh, if we don't come out and play solid, then we're gonna get beaten. So we know we just have to be focused. Uh, that didn't that didn't matter really what um, game we got or who we drew. Uh, we knew it was gonna be tough. So. Um, you know, we're ready to get that, uh, have that focus today and shoot around and then tomorrow in a game. Uh, for Nana, um, you start off the season uh, with a bunch of high major tough challenges this year. Did Coach Davis talk to you guys about we're going to start off in our non-conference schedule with a lot of really difficult tests so that we can get back here and be better prepared? Or did the coaches just do that and you looked at it and like, oh, that's what they, they did? Um, it, was, it was a little bit of both. Um, we wanted to, you know, be better prepared for like when we do get here and the um, opponents we face, you know, uh, we've played Carolina, we played Arkansas. So like we played some big time schools. So when we get here, you know, we know we knew that we were gonna, you know, face a potentially a big time school again. So it was part of it was to prepare for this time, and you know, part of it is just because we want to compete. You know, we want to compete with the best. You know, you want to play all the worst teams in college basketball. You want you want to play some of the best. So you know, as a competitor, I feel like you owe yourself that to do that to go at the best at anything, really. All right, and lastly for me, for Stephen, uh, when you look at the NCAA tournament field, Vermont's not in. Ryder, Wagner, Middle Tennessee State, a bunch of programs just like yours that won 25, 26, 27 games. Meanwhile, there's power five teams that didn't even have winning records in their league, and they get in. When you see stuff like that, does it bother you, or did you not even notice that Vermont's not in or somebody like that? Yeah, I mean, um, definitely saw a couple of those games uh, that they were playing in. I mean, it's just... It's kind of tough. I mean, you go a whole year playing, and then, you know, your season kind of comes down to you win or lose in a tough matchup or a tough game, no matter if you play well or not. Um, it's kind of tough. I mean, it's just how things go with the NCAA tournament. I mean, I didn't really think about it that way, the way that you described it. But, I mean, um, it's just how things kind of go, especially being um, in kind of like the mid-major leagues, low major leagues too as well. I mean, you – face a lot of those uh, situations, a lot of those challenges, and, you know, it's kind of, you know, disappointing to see those other teams, kind of sad to see those teams that, you know, that have a great season and don't have the opportunity to be here. Chris? Hey, Chris Solari from the Detroit Free Press. This is for Zach. You, a year ago, you guys were in this position, almost similar seed, and put the, the test to West Virginia. What did you guys take from that into this year to, to – keep the success going and how do you apply that in the next few days uh yeah so we uh coming here last year was obviously a great experience for us uh it was the first time for us um so we use that as you know motivation to get back here um we use that all season long um every game we know what the main goal was to get back here and uh we didn't want to just get back here we wanted to you know set the goal of you know winning a game or two in here and get as far as we can because um, we think we're talented enough. You know, we got a great group coming back. Um, we got us three as seniors who are kind of leading the way. Um, so, you know, we kind of had that experience under our belt. And we wanted to take that in every game and, and do as best we could. And, um, you know, we have the confidence, you know, uh, this year is a little bit different for us. Uh, last year was, it was fun to take in everything. This year, I, I, I'd say we're a little bit more focused. Um, still enjoying it, but um, definitely want to, play as best we can and uh, hopefully give ourselves a shot to win. Graham. Uh, Graham Couch, Lansing State Journal. For now, how do you deal with Nick Ward? Like what, I mean, he's obviously a guy, a lot of people double team, a lot of, what, 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 how do you deal with him? Uh, yeah, he's, he loves getting deep position and, you know, just getting easy buckets. So, um, 
you know, it's hard. It's, uh, but at the same time, it's fun playing people like that. Um, you don't want it easy. Uh, you want someone that's going to go at you, and I'm going to go at him. So, it's, uh, you know, you got to work, fight around, and try not to get him the uh, easy touches, make everything hard. I mean, good players good players are going to do what good players do, but, you know, you have to make uh, every, every possession hard for him. Evan Meyer, back report online again. Uh, Nana, we, you mentioned about the high majors, but also in the Patriot League, you have two of the service academies uh, that, in your league, in, in Army and Navy. I've asked football players, they say it's very special to play in, the, in that type of environment. Is it the same for college basketball players when they go into West Point and go into Annapolis as the season goes on? Yeah, I mean, I think all three of us, we, the whole team, I mean, we love to play those places, um, not just because of, uh, you know, Army or Navy thing, but just because they just compete. Uh, they play hard the whole game, and uh, they make you earn they make you earn the win. So it's uh, it's just fun. They're competitors, and uh, they're good people. Uh, so, I mean, I can't really speak to the environment, whether it's different from football or not, because I don't know about that, but uh, just overall. Just being, be, them being competitors and everything like that, it's, it's a great spot to play at. Do we have any more questions for the student? Yep, yeah, over here. Ryan Cole with uh, Impact Sports. This is for any of you again. Um, you guys are playing in Detroit, obviously real close to uh, Michigan State. What's it like, what's going through your minds when uh, you, you think you're thinking of kind of the fan turnout as far as the other team goes? Um, yeah, obviously we know that there's going to be a lot of Michigan State fans here. Um, so we're hoping that we can, you know, kind of quiet them early. And then for the uh, fans that aren't here that aren't Michigan State fans, hopefully they jump on our side. Uh, I know we'll have a good amount of Bucknell fans there too. So uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, kind of limit that crowd, um, having as much of a factor, you know, try and uh, uh, shut them up early. Any further questions for the student athletes? All right, gentlemen, we'll let you head off and uh, get ready for practice. Congrats on a great year, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John Terry is the Bucknell SID over in the corner here. So any uh, requests for players, coaches, uh, please see John, and he will help you out. We will uh, we'll open up the second part of this press conference uh, with an opening statement from Coach Davis, and then we will open the floor to questions. Well, obviously, we're very excited to be here. Um, we know it's going to be a great challenge. Michigan State's got one of the best teams in the country. Um, I think we got a pretty good team, too, so we'll go out there and see what happens. We don't need to be better than them for four games or four days. It's just 40 minutes, and we'll let it fly and see what happens. Tom Davis, Fort Wayne News Sentinel. Coach, um, I understand you have a relationship with Fort Wayne men's basketball coach John Kaufman. Talk a little bit about your friendship with him and what, what you get from each other uh, being peers in this business. See, John and I played against each other in college. We were in the same class when I was at Randolph-Macon and he was at uh, Washington Lee. And then twice I've had jobs that he replaced me in when I left, but once at uh, Emory and Henry College and then at, at Colgate. Um, John's a really good guy, great coach. Um, obviously he's done pretty well down there. Um, very smart, someone that you can trust, someone I feel like I can talk to when there's things I want to talk about, I have issues or bounce ideas off. So it's been a uh, very beneficial friendship for me. And the senior class, um, you could coach a long, long time and maybe not have this type of level of athlete and student in one class. Talk a little bit about how special it's been to work with these guys. Well, certainly they make my job a lot easier. It uh, begins with Obviously, they're serious students, and so they take care of all the stuff that needs to be done off the court um, so they can focus when it's time to, to get on the court and practice or play. They're great leaders in that they show up every day. They never complain. Um, 
they are the hardest workers on the team. And if those guys are going to work harder than everybody else, how can anyone else take a day off? Um, and then obviously they're they're excellent players. I mean, it's nice as a coach when you draw something up and someone just goes and makes a shot anyway or uh, finds a way to get a loose ball. But they're certainly very special individuals, and hopefully we have a little while longer with them. Now, when you scheduled your first few weeks of the, the season and your Carolina and, and uh, Arkansas and I think Maryland was in there, was today or tomorrow, I should say, in your mind when you did that or was it some other motive? Well, I think that um, any time you play, you don't want the best team in your league to be the best team you've got to play against. So you want to get your um, your flaws exposed so you can get to work on those and correcting them as soon as possible. But the reality is that with the team we had returning uh, and the success we'd had a year ago, it was hard at our, for us to schedule. It was hard for us especially to get home games. And so playing in the PK-80, which got us North Carolina and Arkansas, got us another home game. Um, and uh, Maryland's willing to play. So we, we had to fill a schedule out. We figured, well, we got a good team. We might as well go play people and challenge ourselves than, uh, than play some smaller schools or some non-Division ones to try to fill out our schedule. Detroit Free Press, when you look back to last year's game against West Virginia, I guess, first of all, from the venue standpoint, did you feel like the, the general crowd was getting behind you guys when it was close to, at that point? And then secondly, what did those guys take into this year that they can make some noise in the tournament? Well, the crowd's a good question. I mean, I'm, it's been a while, <laughs> so I don't remember as, as well. But I thought that there was a good buzz as that, as that game was going close and the people were getting behind us. I think the, the biggest things you take away from, um, from being there before is just that, again, it's one game. Um, it's a basketball game, so there's nothing special going on out there. It's about, about playing the game itself. But I think what it helps you with a lot is, is like today is having been through the press conferences, the open practices, the, the day's more full today than it is the day before a game than your typical game. And so just getting your feet on yourself, understanding what you're going through and how to manage your time and, and prepare properly, I think is the most advantageous thing to having done it before. Any more questions for over here? Matt Wins with MLive. How do you, you mentioned the crowd. How critical do you think it is early in the game to, to not let that slide with? I mean, I would expect there will be a big crowd on their behalf here tomorrow night to not let them go off on a run early and to, just to keep you guys in and keep them. Well, close. I think to have a chance to win is the most important thing is to not fall too far behind. Um, they're really, really good. I mean, they're one of the best teams in the country. They've got great talent, they've got a great coach. And so I think that, that we need to play well for 40 minutes to give ourselves a chance at the end to win a game. And, and if you, and the better teams you play, the smaller margin for error you have. So if you fall down 10, 12, 13 points, you're dug quite a hole. It's going to be hard to get out of. So being able to stay collected or hopefully be able to win, lead the whole way, but at least be able to stay in contact is, is going to be a big deal. Coach, I think Bucknell's made the NCAA tournament maybe. No, I'm sorry. You've won 22 games eight of the last 14 years. Um, does the success feed on itself and kind of the, the snowball's rolling the right way now? Well, I think what it does, I think certainly in some ways it does. I think what it does is it creates a culture and an expectation that guys, when they decide they want to go to Bucknell, are embracing the idea that you've got to be a great student, um, that you've got to be a great athlete, that you want to play at the highest levels, that you want to play in games against Michigan State or North Carolina or Arkansas. I mean, you go right down the line. That's that's why guys come to school at Bucknell, and they, they come because they want the opportunity to do that. So they want the opportunity to play for championships and those types of things. And I think that that in the culture itself certainly helps helps it. But you got to continue to get good players. Um, coaching staff's got to do a good job. you got to have the support of the administration to, to give you the resource you need to be successful. But I think that it does, to answer your question, it does help because it's the expectation now as opposed to it's not an aberration. All right. And Zach Thomas, was, I think he was the number two score in Maryland public school history. How does he end up in Bucknell and not in the ACC or not in the Atlantic 10 or not, you know what I'm saying? Well, I think, or did he have those opportunities? No, I think that everyone develops at different times. And uh, to be honest, Zach probably as a freshman, even as a sophomore, wasn't ready to play at that level. But he kept working, he got stronger, um, he kept improving his game, and now he is a guy that could play at that level. The same thing goes with Nana. The same thing goes with Stephen Brown. The same thing goes with other guys on our roster like Kimball McKenzie and those guys. Is 
yeah, they weren't there when they were 18, 17, 18 years old. And if you're going to play at that level at that age, you've got to be. But if you keep working and developing, you put yourself in a position to be as good as anybody. All right. And lastly for me, um, when you see Vermont doesn't make the NCAA tournament, Ryder, Wagner, Middle Tennessee State, St. Mary's, programs just like yours uh, that are highly successful. But meanwhile, Texas or, you, uh, you know, uh, other programs that don't even have winning records in their league out of power five leagues get in. Does that bother you? No, um, to be honest, no. And we all know what the deal is when we get in it. Um, we're in leagues where you need to win your, your, your conference tournament to get a bid in most instances. I mean, this is my ninth year, I think, overall at Bucknell. Um, the one year in 2005, six, we ended up as a nine seed that might have gotten us in that large bid if we lost. But the reality is you're not going to get the opportunity through your schedule and and things to do that. We all know the deal going in. Um, it's the way it is. So I don't really think I'm just I'm just glad that that our guys were able to rise the occasion and find a way to, to play their best when we needed it. And and we're very fortunate that that was the case. It's not easy. Um, I do feel I, mean, I was actually texting with John, John Becker at Vermont the other day because um, it's tough. They had a great year and do uh, to have a guy make a shot at the end to send you the NIT, and then you got to go to Middle Tennessee State from Vermont. It's not easy, and so I, I do. I feel bad for them because I understand where it comes from, but we know the deal. Um, there's no reason to, to complain about it or anything like that. We had an opportunity to win games, and we, uh, our guys, got the job done. Good for them. Ryan Cole, Impact Sports. Uh, in preparing for Michigan State, a team so highly ranked throughout the year. I mean, is there kind of one kind of focus point as, as far as your preparation and kind of slowing a team as talented as them down? Assuming you've seen them play, so they don't have a lot of weaknesses. <laughs> um, no, I'll say first off, we're not going to try to slow them down. We're going to try to play the way we play because that's the way we're at our best. Um, but they do a lot of things really well. Obviously, you start with Bridges and Jackson, and they're extremely talented. Uh, like you said, Coach Izzo does a great job. They defend, they rebound, they share the ball. I think they get over 19 assists per game, um, one of the tops in the country. They shoot over 50% from the floor. They shoot 40% from the three. So what we've got to do is go out there and we've got to just try to make sure that we make it hard, um, that we don't give up open jumpers, that we, we, we box out so that if they're going to get offensive rebounds and they're going to get some, that they at least have to go over us or around us and not able to just go right down the lane and get them. Um, that we, we attack on offense to try to get them on their heels and make them guard us the whole possession and take shots when they're available. But we've got to make sure that in order to get the good shots that we work together. And if we do those things, I think we'll have a great opportunity tomorrow. Uh, Michael Epps with Focal Point. Um, those three guys, you've been with them for a long time, those three seniors. And I uh, just wanted to ask, what makes them special? Uh, you said you watched them flourish over these four years. What makes them special and what makes your team special? Well, I think what makes them special is the same thing that has made us successful as a team is that they are – very rarely do you come across guys that are absolutely selfless. Um, they honestly don't care who, who wins the award. They don't care who gets the shots tonight. They don't. They don't care as long as at the end of the day we win. I mean, Nana Fallon was Player of the Year as a, as a junior, and I, Zach was one of the people who graduated. Him. Nana never said a word. Zach's Player of the Year this year. There was never any animosity or any. They were all supporting each other. Stephen Brown, I've been saying all year long, is the most underrated player that I've been around in a long time. He's going to score 1,300 points and be third in our school's history in assists, and no one ever talks about him until recently. But he never says a word. He shows up every day. He leads. He's one of the guys that whenever he speaks, they all listen to. But he never has his head down. He never complains. doesn't care. Zach scores 20 points a game. And in the, I believe in the semifinals and finals of the tournament, he scores nine. He was the happiest guy when he won. Didn't matter. Um, and because they're like that, again, everyone else in that locker room has to be like that. And when you have that, you've got a chance to be pretty good. Do we have any final questions for Coach? All right. Uh, thank you, Coach. Thank you good all. Luck. Good luck tomorrow. Congrats on a great season so far.
Landscape Builds. We're a few minutes from getting started here. And so what we'll do here is uh, we'll open the floor to questions for the student athletes. Uh, we have Frank Howard and Tyus Battle. And so uh, please just get to the uh, mic holders and a uh, reminder to please identify yourself and your outlet uh, before asking your question. Ready to go, guys? Yep. All right. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. This is for both of you, Frank and Tyus. Just what you could say about the resolve of this team and, and that no matter what's on the outside, on the inside, you guys have been through a lot of adversity, playing six guys, five a lot of the time, and just believing in one another and knowing that you got to be 40-minute guys this season. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been something we, we, we've enjoyed, you know. Um, you know, understanding uh, playing 40 minutes a night, you know, uh, every day, you know, you kind of start, you know, once, once you understand it's your job, you know, you, you want to start enjoying it. So, you know, we enjoy it. Uh, it's a great time of the year, you know, we're in a great spot. Uh, you know, we're still playing with that chip on our shoulder, you know, uh, and we still have that identity as a team. Um, well, we just focus on our circle, uh, our teammates and our coaching staff. That's what we're focusing with. And uh, we don't try to listen to outside sources and stuff like that. We just go on the court, we play, and uh, we fight. Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic. As a, as a follow-up to that, when Frank and you were talking about playing 40 minutes, when you know that you guys are going to be asked to do that physically, what do you what do you change like about your recovery or your stretching or anything like what, all the other stuff that goes into that? Uh, I mean, every day you know uh, you got to get your treatment in. You know, uh, drink a lot of fluids. Uh, you know, had to change your diet a little bit. Uh, so, you know, you try to do anything that, that gives you energy. You know, to ref refuel your body. Um, you know, uh, this. You know, we all want to. You know, basketball to be a job is one day, you know, so, you know, it helps you treat the treat as a job early soon. Uh, yeah, just like Frank said, we do a, we spend a lot of time recovering, uh, resting, sleeping. Uh, our training staff does a great job helping us be able to play this uh, amount of minutes in the game. So, uh, yeah. Questions? For both of you guys, again, just what this season has taught you about yourselves personally and about this group. Um, it just like I said before, over and over, the, just the heart that we have in this team, and that's what makes us special. Uh, we've been down multiple games, late in games, uh, but we always find a way to come back, fight, and get uh, get wins, just like we saw uh, the other night. So um, I think that's the main thing about this team. Yeah, that's just uh, you know, it shows the character of, of each guy on this team and uh, of each guy on the, on the coaching staff. You know, uh, every day we understand we're playing basketball. You know what I mean? So we we gonna give it all we have. Uh, you know, uh, Coach ba Coach Bayham has done a great job of uh, building the culture around you know you know campus and stuff and around the, the gym. So you know, every day we go hard um, and you know we're gonna fight today. <coughs> Hi, uh, Brian Estridge with the TCU Sports Network. Tyus, um, Coach Dixon said he's been watching you a long time from back in recruiting days all the way uh, watching your career. Uh, so he says he, he knows a lot about you and loves watching you play. But what do you know about TCU? What do either one of you know about TCU, your opponent? Um, well, we know he's a really good coach, really good defensive coach, offensive coach. Uh, we've gone over stuff throughout scouting and stuff like that. So we'll be ready to play. Yeah, um, you know, TCU being a whole nother conference, you know, didn't really get to see them much during the year, but we've done a lot of scouting. And uh, I know Coach Dixon's a great coach, you know. I know I'm 0-3 against them, so, you know, we're looking to get get one tomorrow. And, uh, you know, we'll know it'll be a tough game. In your, in your scout, are you able to use anything from his past teams at other places that they sim do similarly that can help you out? Uh, I mean, I assume he's uh, he might try to attack the zone the same way, you know. Um, but it's different personnel. Uh, when he was at Pitt, he had uh, you know, some tall, tall guys who who were very versatile. So um, you know, uh, 
his team now. You know, he is a great team. You know, they, they have, still have a lot of guys who are versatile. But, um, you know, we're just going to look at the team they have now, you know, look at their schemes and look at how they played this year and, uh, you know, just go from there. Any other questions for the student athletes? Okay, gentlemen, we'll we'll let you head back, get ready for practice. Thank you. Coach should be joining us in a minute or so. As we've done all day, we will ask uh, Coach Beheim to open uh, with a statement, and then we'll open the floor to questions. Yeah, I'll just take questions. I'm ready for that. Dan Tortoro, Wake Up Call, DT.com. Coach, just what you can say about you know the heart of this team, the drive of them, the entire season, no matter what's happened up and down, they haven't blamed each other for anything, and they've stayed close. Well, we've never blamed anybody for anything in 42 years, so we're not going to start now. Um, you know, we go out, we do the best we can, what we have, and this team has played, you know, as hard as you could ask them to play. They've every game they've competed because of the way our schedule ended up setting up. Um, everybody we played had a chance, and in the, in, in the way we are, uh, everybody that we played this year had a legitimate chance to to play with us or beat us, starting with, you know, Texas Southern and Iona and Buffalo and, you know, all the teams we played early. Uh, we had to maximize our effort in each one of those games to win. Um, we've struggled at times offensively. At other times, we've done some really good things offensively. But given the limitations and the numbers, uh, uh, I, I couldn't ask uh, anything more from this from this group. Jason Ross Jr., DetroitSportsMedia.com. Uh, Jim, what do you think your team did well last night that you'd hope to carry over to tomorrow? Yeah, you know, I think our defense was pretty good. Uh, we made some bad mistakes defensively, uh, but you know Arizona's a high-scoring team. They averaged in the 80s, and we held them to 56 points. So I think our defense was good. Um, I think offensively we, we struggled as we have for the most part this year. We had a couple stretches in the game where we played well, um, but uh, it was uh, again mainly our defense and uh, rebounding were pretty good. Mike Watersman, Syracuse Post Standard. Jim, do you see any similarities in this TCU team and Jamie's teams at Pitt? I think this is a much better offensive team than some of the teams, most of the teams I think he had at Pittsburgh. I think he was more, they were more defense. We got hurt more when we lost to Pittsburgh on the defensive end. We, we, didn't, we didn't really get much offense, have much offense success against uh, his better teams. Uh, we lost some of those games in the 50s. You know, we just couldn't score enough. But uh, this team is a really, really good offensive team. I think much better than any that, that I can remember uh, at Pittsburgh. This team has got multiple guys that can score and size and you know, a really good rebounding team. Uh, I think it's a much, much better offensive team than, than any of those teams were. Hi, I'm Vedant Gupta. I'm applying for uh, Sports Illustrated for Kids. Mm -hmm. And a lot of kids like, like giving back to their community. And over the years, what have you seen, what community work that you guys have done? Well, we've, we're in a rather small community. So our players have been tremendously active. We do multiple things every year. We do a dinner for uh, uh, the uh, Make-A-Wish uh, group that provides about 
eight to ten wishes a year, which is, means in the neighborhood we raise about $100,000 every year with a luncheon for, for ladies only. We do uh, stuff through our foundation. Our players are very active. Uh, we generally grant about five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars a year in the community to the boys and girls club and and any other organization that works with kids our players are very active in in our foundation and our fundraisers um, we do a lot of other things in the community those are the big things we do but we do a lot of other things in the community and and we work with uh, soldiers at at, uh, at fort drum uh, 10th Mountain Brigade, which is the main fighting group that represents our country in about 14 different countries in the world, and specifically mostly in Afghanistan. But uh, we're, the players are very active and have really helped us uh, in, in all the things that we do in the community. And, it's uh, it's been it's been good. We've raised a lot of money for Coaches versus Cancer. They've helped us with that, and uh, really proud of uh, our players being involved in in the community. So, Coach, I understand your your daughter for the game yesterday is in the state finals. Tomorrow, tomorrow. tomorrow yeah, tomorrow. Sorry. So, so um, number one question is that as a parent. You know, what has it been like to take her on that journey? And number two, how do you keep an eye on that game, hopefully avoiding the time conflict? Well, I hope it's live streamed. It, you know, they play at 6.15 tomorrow night. Hopefully it is. I was at her last game where they won the regional, and uh, they won the last two state championships in their division. So they have three seniors who have played through. This will be their third try at winning a state championship. It's fun to watch them. You know, you watch them in the summer with AU, and of course, my other son played in the state last year and uh, played in the prep school championships this year. And uh, my other son's a freshman at Cornell, so I got to watch a lot of extra games this year. I'm really happy that they're done with AU basketball. It's you know, every coaches complain that we have to go out for a month. I was out four months last summer, April, May, June, July. <laughs> And a couple in August. So, uh, but it's fun watching them play. They like the game. They've always liked it. Uh, their mother pushes them pretty hard. <laughs> and uh, I like to go watch them. She coaches them. Uh, Greg Joyce, New York Post. How do you handle such a quick turnaround with a, a group that's already shorthanded and having to play another game in 48 hours? Well, you know, it's tough, you know, but if you're in this tournament, you play uh, Friday night, you're going to play again Sunday, so, you know, you're going to play twice anyway. Uh, during the season, we played a, quite a few, well, not as many as we usually do, but we played a few back to, you know, Sunday, Mondays, and back-to-back uh, -back games, and we had a lot of three games in six days, seven days, so... You know we're we're prepared for that, but uh, you know they'll be they'll be ready to play. Coach Ryan Estridge uh, with TCU Radio. Earlier, Coach Dixon talked about uh, how you were very open with him early on when he got the pit job and, and uh, developed a really good relationship. Can yeah. you talk and expand on that relationship that you have with him? Well, we've you know we were together a lot of years in the Big East and then the ACC and. Uh, you know, I, I gave him too many hints that were good because he beat us a lot. But, uh, no, he uh, – I thought he did an unbelievable coaching job at Pittsburgh. You know, Ben started, Ben Howland got it started. And then uh, when Jamie took over, they did even better. And, uh, you know, he's a really, really good basketball coach. And uh, I, I just uh, have a lot of respect. We – I was the chairman of the committee of the – USA Basketball, we had him coach one of our teams overseas, and uh, it was really a hard tournament. It was really a hard tournament. We had a team going to, I'm not, I think it was Australia, but, you know, I did it for about 15 years. I had 15 different teams in 15 different years, but I think he coached the one that it was a really hard tournament. We didn't expect to win, and he won the tournament with the guys he had. We, it was definitely, uh, they were underdogs, but, he, you know, he's a great basketball coach. And uh, he's done a, a great job, obviously, at TCU, and he did a great job at Pittsburgh. 
Nicole again. We wouldn't be here if he was still at Pittsburgh. Go ahead. Um, I'm wondering, what, just as a basketball coach, even when you're in the tournament, do you watch other games in the I tournament? I watch every game. So you've been watching games all day? I watch every game all night during the summer, during the season. I, I text Mark Few after every game he plays what he should have been doing right and what he didn't do right. I love basketball. Uh, when they're not on, I watch the NBA. When they're not on, I watch the women's basketball. When they're not on, I watch curling, if that's what's on. I know more about curling than any basketball coach in the country. I can tell you that right now. I like sports. I stay up late. I like to watch TV, and I like to watch sports on TV. Soccer's getting to be my favorite, but, you know. My son have an argument. I think Messi's the best player. He thinks Ronaldo's the best player, but he's never right. He's just smarter than I am. I couldn't get into Cornell. <laughs> Jim, how is Brahma Sidibe's knee? How is he feeling? Same as left? he's felt all year. Terrible. <laughs> uh, what, what has given you that indication, just how he's playing in practice, how he's moving? It's been bad for the whole year. I don't think it's going to change today or tomorrow. He's, he's doing the best he can on it. He's got pain every time he plays. It's not going to hurt it anymore. But, it, you know, he needs to get it fixed. And, you know, as soon as we're done playing, he'll – We'll get it get it fixed, and it's not a major thing. But he's he has constant pain, um, you know. Every game he can't jump. I don't know what happened at Pittsburgh, but he had a, one of those something happen. I don't know what it was, but he felt felt good that one night. But that was that's been it. We'll take one final question for Coach. <clears throat> Yep, go ahead. Uh, Jim, just looking back with your time with uh, David Patrick, is there any particular memory that, that stands out most? Memory of who? David Patrick with TCU. Oh, David. David. I was thinking, what, what was he talking about? I was thinking of David Padgett for a minute there. David, uh, you know, we recruited David. He came in. He's a really was a good player, but he got in. He came into Syracuse, and we had a I don't, you know, like I'll, I'll forget the, I'm forget. i not going to even try to name the player. We had a great point guard, so he really wasn't going to get a lot of time. And, uh, you know, he transferred, which transfers are, are good. I mean, I, I, sometimes, not all the time, but quite a bit of the time, transfers, it's a good thing if you're stuck um, and uh, you get an opportunity to play someplace else. It's good for players to be able to do that. I think it will cause some issues with when when players are able to freely leave. But the more that I think about it, even though there will be there will be some just crazy stuff happen. Some guy will you know just say, you know, I'm going to play a lot here, but I'm going to play more over there. So I'm just going to go over there, and you know, or coach yells at me too much. I'm going to leave. You know, there's going to be a lot of that, but on the other hand, there's a lot of cases where you'll have a kid that just he just didn't fit in your program for whatever, and he can go over here and play and not have to sit out. So I've always been against it because I'm afraid of what will happen, but in the balance of everything, I think the – players to have that freedom will will end up being overall a good thing even though it will cause some crazy stuff uh, we need to th we really don't need to do as much as people think about this our game but we need to do more for the players I've never rec I love Charles Barkley I've never really been a fan of some of the crazy things he said, but today he probably made about the best case of anybody I've heard on television in terms of what we should do. I, I didn't, I don't know who told him to say those things because I know Charles didn't figure it out by himself, but somebody did. And he had some great observations about paying players and, you know, what, you know, what the deal is and, um, I think sometimes we forget there are 4,500 players playing college basketball, 4,500. And I was one of the 4,400 
and 50 that was very happy to have a scholarship and play college basketball. There's 50 guys that, you know, probably could get some more than they get in college or get, but those 50 guys, and most of them end up making $100 million. So they end up all right. But the rest of us, college basketball is a pretty good thing for us. And we have made changes and we have helped the players in, in ways that have, I think, been very good. And I'm hopeful that this commission finds some other way with, to, to enhance players' experiences. I mean, parents to games, parents travel, hotels for the tournament, or even for a game in the regular season or two. Um, and, and whatever else they can do to enhance the experience for players. Um, you know, if, if you sold T-shirts, you know, one of our players, if they got, it'd be about 5,000 bucks. That's for one guy. That's, that's about what it would be. It's not like it'd be 100,000. I'm not saying that some guys wouldn't get $100,000 someplace, but, you know, that's, that's in that. But let's just do some more for the players, if we can. Let them talk to it, get advice, you know, from agents who are going to tell them to leave anyway. But that's all right. Let them get it. Let them talk to them and uh, you know, see what happens down the road. And they, they, there's so much made out of one and done. I've even said it. It's like, a, it's like if next year there was one and done. Just think of this year's freshman class. Who would have come out? Who would have come out this year? Who would not have gone to the NBA? Trey Young? He didn't even hardly play on the USA team last summer. He's going to be a top 10 pick. Why? Why is he going to be a top 10 pick? Only one reason. He came to college. If he'd have come out last year, he wouldn't have been a late first round, maybe. And he played the whole year in the D League. Now he's going to be a top 10 pick and get a lot of money and play. Who really would have come out? I think maybe, I'm not going to start naming all kinds of names, but I think a couple guys, two or three. And some more might come out, and they'd all be playing in the D League for two or three years, like a lot of guys that come out early now. But, so let them go. Let, let those guys go. And... I mean, you just look at uh, Trey Young, for example. He'd be playing in Idaho someplace this year, riding the bus. I mean, it's this whole thing about, oh, yeah, let's get him in the G League. You ever been in the G League? You ever gone to a G League game? You ever lived where those guys lived? They're adults, 23-, 4-year-old guys. You're not going to put 17-year-old guys there? you got to be crazy. The other thing is, there's 17 guys on every NBA team. Do people realize that? Do you even realize that? There's 17 guys on the teams. So if you're not a superstar coming out of college, you're Bagley's and those guys, right? Where do you think you're going to, how do you think you're going to get the NBA? The guys up there at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, they're you. <laughs> With three or four years already in. And those guys up there in the league, they're not going anywhere. There's not many places up there. More and more people will start to understand that as we move forward. Sure, you can have a G League team. You got 12 guys there. How many guys? And you got 17 on the on the on the or 15 plus the two down, two guys with two ways. So where are those guys going? And so you, instead of paying them 30, what are you going to pay them, 100, 75, 100? By summer, they will not have a penny. It's just not a good plan. We need to fix the college experience as much as we can. Obviously, if some things went wrong. We know that. Let's try to fix it. It's still the best way. If I have a son, I want him to go to college. If he's, even if he's a great player, go to college for a year or two. What, it, does, it does not hurt you to go to college, whether it's one year or two years. It does not hurt you. It only helps you. Well, that's enough of that. Goodbye. Pardon? I'm, I'm not shocked. Miami struggled a little bit. 
you know, without Bruce Brown, it's been a struggle. He's their, he's their guy. I mean, he's a, a great leader, great guy, and Loyola had a great year. You know, I mean, there's going to be upsets in this tournament. I really thought the Penn game would be closer. They didn't shoot it quite as well as they can. But, uh, you know, Gonzaga's really good this year, and we played Greensboro last year, those same guys, and they're good. They had a really good team. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's college basketball. There's nothing wrong with the game. The game is good. We got a lot of good teams. There's a lot of good players on a lot of teams. And it makes for, I think, great regular seasons because you see great games. And uh, we weren't great this year, but people that came to our games, they saw great games. They not only saw the league games, but the other teams we played that came in were really good. And uh, it's, the game's in great position because there's a lot of really good players. There's a lot of really good coaches. And uh, the game will be fine. It's a, it's a great game. And, uh, you know, we just got to do some things and get things as, as make some idea, make some changes, do some things that I think can, can be done and help the game. We'll see what happens going ahead. Thank you.